If your child has been struggling with mouth breathing, snoring, or frequent ear or sinus infections, they might be experiencing issues related to enlarged adenoids. In some cases, a straightforward procedure called an adenoidectomy can help. In this video, we'll walk you through what adenoids are and their role in the body, why an adenoidectomy might be needed, what happens during the surgery, recovery and aftercare, and finally, the potential risks to be aware of. So first things first, what exactly are the adenoids? Well, adenoids are small lumps of tissue located high in the throat, just behind the nose. They're part of the immune system in children, and they help fight off infections by trapping bacteria and viruses. But adenoids naturally shrink with age and usually disappear by the time most children reach their teens. In adults, they're considered vestigial, meaning that they no longer serve a purpose. Sometimes though, adenoids become enlarged. This can happen due to repeated infections, allergies, or occasionally children are simply born with larger adenoids. When this happens, they can partially block the airway and cause a range of different problems, including difficulty breathing through the nose, constant mouth breathing, especially during sleep, loud snoring or sleep apnea, which means pauses in breathing during sleep, frequent sinus or ear infections, or chronic glue ear, which can lead to hearing issues. Now, if these symptoms are mild, your doctor may suggest monitoring and waiting to see if they improve over time. But if they're more severe or causing disrupted sleep or recurring infections, an adenoidectomy might be advised. So what happens during an adenoidectomy? Well, an adenoidectomy is most commonly performed on children between one and seven years old. In fact, it's one of the most common ENT surgeries carried out in children. Before surgery, your child will need to avoid food and drink for a set time, and the hospital will give you guidance on this. Your healthcare provider may ask you to stop any medicines that thin the blood, like aspirin or ibuprofen beforehand. Now, on the day of the surgery, your child will be given a general anaesthetic, meaning that they'll be put to sleep and they won't feel anything. The procedure is done through the mouth, so there are actually no external cuts. The surgeon carefully removes the adenoids using a heated wire in a technique that is called electrocautery to try stop any bleeding. Now, sometimes adenoidectomy is done at the same time as tonsil removal or tonsillectomy or grommet insertion if there are overlapping symptoms. And for more information on this, please check out the channel of my colleague, Dr. Vic Veer, who is a consultant ENT surgeon and has loads of great videos on this. So what about recovery? Well, the surgery usually takes around 30 minutes and most children go home on the same day. Once the procedure is over, your child will be monitored in recovery until they're awake and able to breathe, swallow, and talk. During the recovery period, which lasts about one or two weeks, your child might experience a sore throat or earache, vomiting or upset stomach within the first 24 hours, a fever in the first few days, noisy breathing, bad breath, or trouble swallowing. These are all fairly common and usually settle down with time. Now, there are a few things that you can do to help your child recover. However, these are just general pieces of information and you should always adhere to the specific advice given by your child's own surgical team. So the first thing is to keep them off school or nursery for at least a week, to avoid crowded places or smoky environments to reduce the risk of infection, to offer soft or cool foods like yogurt, ice cream, cooled soup and mashed potatoes following surgery, to avoid spicy or acidic foods, so things like lemons or oranges, which can irritate the throat. Encourage fluids to help with healing, and this is really important because while they probably don't want to drink, it's really important to stay hydrated, so regular small sips of fluid are important. And finally, use paracetamol or ibuprofen as advised to manage pain. Now, a quick but really important note is to never give aspirin to children under 16 unless prescribed and specified by your doctor. So what are the risks of adenoid removal? Well, adenoidectomy is generally a safe and routine procedure, but like all surgeries, there are some risks. These might include bleeding at the site, which very rarely might require another operation, infection, which can be treated with antibiotics, a reaction to the anesthetic, changes in the voice, though this typically settles within weeks, persistent or unresolved symptoms, and in very rare cases, the adenoids may grow back. 
Finally, when should you seek medical help after surgery? Well, you should contact your GP or family doctor if your child has got severe or worsening pain, they develop a fever after three days postoperatively, they're struggling to drink fluids or can't keep fluids down, they have a stiff neck. Alternatively, you should seek emergency care if your child has got any excessive bleeding from the mouth or nose, or if they're vomiting blood or dark material that looks like coffee grounds. So to sum up, an adenoidectomy is a quick and effective procedure to treat problems caused by enlarged adenoids. It can help children to breathe more easily, sleep better, and reduce the number of infections that they might experience. Most children typically recover quickly and they go on to have fewer health issues as a result. For more information, you can visit trusted sources of information, which I've included links to in the description box of this video. And as always, speak with your own healthcare provider if you've got any questions, because this is just a general educational resource. Please also feel free to like the video, share it, or leave any feedback in the comments section below to share your own experiences. And until next time, take care and bye.